We'll now look at a second type of improper integral. What these things have in common is that they all involve infinity in some way. The first type of improper integral had vertical asymptotes, so the function function was going to infinity. Here, we're going to look at infinite intervals, and we're going to integrate over infinite intervals. We will keep our two types of improper integrals distinct. That is to say, if we're integrating over an infinite interval, we will assume that the function is continuous and then in particular that the function has no vertical asymptotes. And here we're integrating from a to infinity. We've got a half infinite interval that looks like this. We could also integrate from negative infinity to b. If we have a half infinite interval like that. And we could also, in fact, integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity. However, this is going to get its own video and note. So we'll just look at these two cases. And now that you've seen the first type of improper integral, where we replace one of the limits of integration with something else and take a limit, you may not be surprised at how we deal with these. We replace our infinite limit with a finite number and then we take a limit as that finite number goes to infinity. And the second case is handled just the same. We'll replace our infinite limit with a finite number. And then we'll let this finite number approach this infinite value as a limit. Just as with the first type of improper integral, these limits might 
might exist or they might not. And our terminology is the same. If the limits we use to define them exist, we call the integrals convergent. If these limits do not exist, we call the integral divergent. Improper integrals of this type are very important. Um, and we have much to say about them, but this video will end here. In the next section of Sakai, we'll pick up with some examples.